What's up everybody? Kalen back with uh, the second part of our uh, S3 Sniper Challenge Granite Creek, Montana little vlog series. And um, at the end of the first vlog, I told you guys that we would look at the rifle. And so that's what we're gonna do. I'm back home. Um, I gotta pull the rifle out of the truck. I gotta give it a cleaning and um, do some maintenance. And I'll take that opportunity to show you guys how I configured everything and how uh, we shot that match. So here we go. Here we go. So first things first. First and foremost, man, everybody asks me about this vice. This vice comes from Amazon. You get it at Amazon and it comes from a company called Grizzly and it's called a pattern maker's vice. And it's got kind of movable jaws and a soft pad in there to make sure that you're not gonna mar up your work. And it's just a really nice vice to, to, to hold your rifle without marring up the finish on it or you know, scraping it or whatnot. So um, it, you can swivel it. It's got a screw in the bottom here. You can move it around, do what you gotta do. I like it because uh, it lets me put the rifle into a bunch of different configurations, whether I'm wrenching on it or cleaning it. All right, so let's talk about the rifle. As you guys can see, it's based on a Kinetic Research Group Whiskey 3 folding chassis. I've shot this chassis for years. I got like one of the second generations in the shop. I like this particular chassis because it's super adjustable. It's got a reasonable weight to it and it's modular and I can use the same chassis as a work gun doing like law enforcement and military classes as well as for competition and I get to keep the same fit and feel. I particularly like using the enclosed forehand because when I use my forward hand or my support hand in positions, my thumb wraps around right here at the back end of the night vision rail and it gives me a good reference point and it lets me rest my thumb over the top of the rifle and get a little bit more control out of it without touching the barrel. And the folder makes nice and easy for cleaning. I know that's kind of a vanity thing right now. Um, you know, from a tactical perspective, from a professional perspective, the folding stock just lets you get the rifle more compact. Doesn't really matter much because I'm rocking a 26 inch barrel with a suppressor on it. So concealability is not my concern at this point. The other thing that I really like about the uh, Whiskey 3 is uh, the ability to fine tune, really fine tune the adjustment on both the cheek piece height as well as the butt pad length of pull. And I can make rapid adjustments if I need to on the fly. And just, I've been shooting Whiskey 3 for a long time and Justin's a smart dude and knows what he's doing and he makes a damn fine chassis. Okay, moving on into the rifle action. I'm a huge proponent and big fan of American Rifle Company. I've been shooting their actions for a long time now, and I chose to use the Archimedes as the action that I'm gonna run for uh, competitions going forward. I like the Archimedes action. It's kind of, um, it's not necessarily the flagship, at least in my opinion, of the American Rifle Company actions, but uh, the Archimedes has a ton of awesome features in it, and it's, um, it's one of the most well thought out actions. As a matter of fact, I think all of them are the most, some of the most well thought out actions in the world of Remington 700 clones. The cool thing about these actions is they're not just clones, they're actually actions that Ted at American Rifle Company said, I wanna incorporate all of the best features from all of these highly successful and historic rifle actions and incorporate them into one and boom, he came up with the mousing field, which then led to the nucleus and now the Archimedes. The Archimedes is super rad because it has a lot of safety features in it as well. And you guys can look those safety features up over at um, AmericanRifleCompany.com. Uh, so uh, the main thing that I do like about this one is if in the event that I did have a stuck case, it's got a cammed bolt handle that allows you to get some more leverage in the event that you got a case that's either stuck or just a little bit on the stubborn side. That way you're not jacking around with your bolt in the event that happens. All right, so from the action, we have a proof research, six millimeter, one and seven and a half twist, competition contour barrel. Uh, I've been shooting for proof since 2012. They make a phenomenal barrel. Uh, that's not to say other barrel manufacturers don't make a phenomenal barrel, but they just happen to make a really badass rifle barrel. 
This one again is that competition contour and it's finished out at 26 inches. At the end of the barrel, I have a Thunder Beast CB7. It's a steel can and I chose to go with a steel can on this rifle because it helps me balance things out. If you guys notice, I don't have a whole lot of weights and all kinds of stupid shit on this rifle. I like to keep things super simple and the only weight that I have on this is the angled bag rider at the buttstock here and coupled with the suppressor, the balance point is three inches right in front of the magwell and it's perfect for what I want to do with the rifle. So everybody's going to ask me about the weight of how much this rifle weighs. We'll get to that after I talk about the rest of the stuff that we got on the gun. Um, so the next most obvious thing that we have here is the optic. The optic, I chose to go with a Collis 525i with this SKMR4 reticle. I'm a huge fan of Collis optics. I'm a huge fan of all kinds of optics. All the different brands out there, I think a lot of people, especially in this day and age, get like, like to get wrapped around the axle and it's like this big deal if all of a sudden you start shooting a different scope manufacturer. It's not a big deal. It just happens that this particular optic suits my needs for this particular mission better. And so therefore that's why I picked it. I really like the reticle choice. The Skimmer 4 really resonates with my eyes and my ability to pick out my 10th mil holds because of the way that the, the, the reticle subtensions are structured in the Skimmer 4. It's a Christmas tree reticle. It gives me the opportunity to use a Christmas tree if I need it, but it's but it's not nearly as obtrusive as many of the other reticles out there on the market. And I think that's one thing that everybody needs to really understand when you're shopping for scopes is to understand that you have to pick a scope that offers a reticle that resonates with your eye and your brain. So that way you can process that information. I can't stress how important that is. Super important. Okay, so the other benefits of the Collis series scopes, very, very positive clicks. Um, I have a DLR that I'm going to be mounting on this particular competition rifle because it has bigger uh, increments that I can see much, much faster. But for my use, and it's, I think it's kind of like, you know, tomato, tomato type thing, but very positive uh, clicks. Uh, I like the fact that it has uh, a parallax adjustment underneath the elevation turret so I can get everything done in one fell swoop with, uh, with my hand. And I like the fact that it has a left side windage because I'm a right-handed shooter. There are some instances where we dial wind. You could dial wind for a moving target. Um, you could dial wind for a match or a situation where you have a lot of distance targets and heavy wind speeds. There was one point in time at the last match we were holding like two and a half mils on targets at 800 yards. So anything more than that, anything outside of that for a sustained portion of time, I might want to think about dialing some wind so that way I can keep my eyeball in the center of the reticle no more than a you know mil and a half from center. That just happens to be what my eye resonates with the most. So um, I got this particular uh, coloscope um, seated into a spur 4001 mount and this this mount does not have any bias in it because i have uh, 30 minutes in the rail itself on the archimedes action big big fan of spur mounts i've used them for a long time they are truly repeatable i can take this scope off put it back on the action and it's going to hold zero within a tenth if not better than a tenth and it's this is something that i've done over and over and over again so um, huge plus for this spur mounts Moving along um, to some of the more ancillary slash shooter support gear, uh, I chose to use Thunder Beast bipods for this event. I've actually chose to use Thunder Beast bipods for pretty much everything now. They created a super badass bipod that gives me all the flexibility that I need. And if you guys remember in the first part of the vlog, we talked about bipod extensions and they're a snap to fix from, from this particular length here. Um, I like that feature as well, just with a push of a button. That thing shoots out of there with some decent spring pressure. And I really don't find myself needing much in between from extended to completely retracted. And if I do, I just throw the extensions on there and I can swap them out from rubber feet to spike feet. I happen to have this guy mounted with really right stuff, um, Arca clamp. So that way I can slide the bipod around on the um, Arca rail that I have mounted at the bottom here for whatever position I need. Something else that I'm a huge proponent of that you guys have probably heard in the past is the sling. 
Uh, a rifle sling is super important to have on your rifle. It doesn't just provide you with uh, a method to carry. It actually provides you with a method to augment the stability in your shooting positions. And that's something that we're going to get into in our next uh, master class in tripod shooting, as well as taking the tripod into the field and utilizing it in those situations. The sling that I particularly like in this case is a Magpul MS1. I like it because of the slider action. I can adjust this slider with you know, a fraction of an inch just to get the perfect tension that I'm looking for in a super short amount of time. And that's really the big thing with me and slings is that if a sling can't be adjusted to exactly where I want it within a couple of seconds, the fucking thing is garbage because it's just taking me too much time. I need it to be, I need it to be able to be adjusted um, perfectly for whatever situation it is because it's all dependent on what my body geometry is doing in the shooting position. So, um, oh, one last thing, uh, a couple last things actually before I forget. Triggers, a lot of you guys are gonna ask about the trigger. I'm going with a Trigger Tech Diamond two-stage flat shoe and I got it set at a pound and a half. I don't need a trigger lower than a pound and a half. I've tried it, it's not for me in my particular frame of mind. I don't wanna have anything that's, that's much lighter than that. I don't wanna risk having a negligent discharge and I don't really feel as though that it's gonna take my shooting ability to the next higher level um, and I'm not willing to do that to sa and, and sacrifice safety, okay? So trigger tech, two-stage, flat shoe. And if your guys are asking, I'm, I'm kind of digging the two-stage. It's, um, so it's not for everybody. I like the two-stage just because I can feel taking up the slack and marrying my finger to the trigger. I always want to have my finger married to the trigger as I go through the bottom or from the top to the bottom of my breathing cycle in the preparation to break the shot. So... Last but certainly not least, suppressor cover. I elected to use a suppressor cover, although I didn't really have to because it was blowing nuclear out there. There was no chance of you know, my sight picture getting followed from Mirage from the can uh, or the barrel. But in this one, um, I took rifles only uh, FTW suppressor cover. It works really well. So um, there you have it, guys. That's the rifle. So let's talk about ammo real quick. Okay, guys, let's do a quick weight comparison. We'll head into the into the shop, grab our posted scale, see what's what. Okay, so here, here we go. We are at 19, we're at 19.8 pounds. Okay, let's check that out so you guys can see that. Boom, 19.8 pounds on the scale. All right, ammo. So for this match, Philip and I elected to shoot um, six millimeter Creedmoor, and we decided to shoot six millimeter Creedmoor simply because uh, the velocity that we could get out of these uh, new uh, Hornady 110 grain A tips. We are beyond impressed by this projectile. Um, but before we get into that, the reason for the six Creedmoor is it just, I can get more velocity out of the cartridge. And uh, in field matches, velocity is gonna equal a little bit better performance in the wind and a little bit better performance in terms of elevation at distance. And that definitely held true for us at, uh, at the S3 challenge, man. It was blowing you know, 20 plus miles an hour on the first day and very, very switchy um, on and off and fishtailing headwinds on the second day. So. Anybody who's ever shot in those wind conditions understands, man, that those wind conditions suck to shoot in because of how unpredictable things are. So six Creedmoor, I went ahead and used a Nosler Virgin Brass on this, uh, this go around. I'm using Federal 210M primers, uh, GM rather, GM not Magnum, just straight up 210 GM primers. And the 110 A-tips, I've got these guys seated at 70 thousandths off the lands and they are over the top of 40.1 grains of H4350. That particular load yielded a, an extreme spread of 10 feet per second. And I don't usually talk about SDs because we usually don't shoot enough ammo over the chronograph to get a, a statistically definitive number from that. But in this particular case, the SD was 4.2. Um, I developed this load literally four days prior to going to the match. Um, finished it up the day before the match, and I used the optimal charge weight uh, load development method for this, and we're gonna do another series on that coming up. 
So um, the, the OCW test is badass. It's always worked for me and it's always yielded fantastic results and I can trust it to get loads developed in a very short amount of time. So uh, there you have it guys. That is the rifle and ammunition combination that I took on the event. And the, the whole combination here is, this is pretty much where I'm gonna live in terms of how I have this rifle set up. I haven't quite decided whether or not I'm gonna jump from uh, suppressed back to being uh, a muzzle break. And the reason I went with suppressed on this match is I felt like my brain was getting a little concussed from the big four port muzzle breaks. And I wanted to make sure that like I wasn't, you know, um, forcing any bad habits uh, subconsciously as a result of the muzzle break. So um, with that being said, I'll probably stick with the suppressor uh, and do some final testing, but I am gonna go to the dark side, guys, and um, spin up a couple of BRA barrels for this action. So, yep, you heard it, man, I'm going to the dark side. We're going to um, make a push for this in the 2022 competition circuit and see, uh, from my perspective, if shooting a BRA really is all the craze. And we'll see what happens, because uh, there was some dudes shooting BRAs at the last match, and I think that they could have definitely appreciated some more velocity out of that thing for those particular conditions. So, guys, with that being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoy the vlog, and if you guys haven't already checked out moderndayrifleman.com, please, please, please get over there, check that out. It's a huge brand new community, and it's growing by the day. It's where we're hosting our digital master classes, and it's also where we're hosting our online monthly subscription service. It's almost like a social media network, but no trolls. No bullshit, egotistical nonsense, just people that are just like you, looking for solid information without any of the drama, and that's exactly what's happening over at moderndayrifleman.com. So if you guys, again, like this, give us a like, give us a share, tell your friends about it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep your face on the gun, and you know what else to do.